In this video, we talk about the first design element retailers can use, which is the layout of the store. The textbook discusses three layouts, grid, racetrack, and freeform. And I've added in two additional layouts, spine and maze. The first layout we talk about is the grid layout. The grid layout has parallel aisles with merchandise on shelves on both sides of the aisles, and cash registers are typically located at the entrances or the exits. The grid layout is well suited for customers that are interested in utilitarian benefits. These individuals may not be interested in hedonic benefits. They don't need any sort of visually exciting design. They want to be able to easily locate their products and make their purchases quickly. Let's look at a few examples. When you see these two images on the screen, what types of stores come to mind? Hopefully you said, or are thinking about, supermarkets. You may have also said full line discount stores and or super centers. Both full line discount stores and super centers do use a grid layout, but they typically also incorporate another type of layout that we'll talk about in a minute. Supermarkets are going to be the type of retailer that will use the grid layout most frequently. Think about what customers are looking for at these stores. What benefits are you looking for at the supermarket? Frequently shoppers in supermarkets are looking for utilitarian benefits. I know I asked at the beginning of the semester, who enjoys going to the grocery store? I think we talked about this in chapter two. We were talking about the number of shopping trips individuals make, and I asked who enjoys going to the grocery store. Many of you said that you do not enjoy grocery shopping on a weekly basis. You said you go to the grocery store because you have to eat. Grocery stores know this. They know that people are not overly excited to go to the supermarket each week. By designing their store in a grid layout, customers know exactly where to go to buy their items. They can find their products quickly, make their purchases, and get out of the store. A benefit to the retailer about using a grid layout is that it's cost efficient. There is much less wasted space in the store because the aisles are going to be the same width and the same depth. If we look at the example on the left on the screen, we can see that all of the aisles in the same color are the same length. They're probably also the same height. We can see that the blue color, these are all the exact same length, probably also the same height. We can see over in the bulk bins the same thing. It's different than the blue aisles, but again, these aisles are the same length and most likely the same height. Same thing again with the produce. This layout creates much less wasted space in the stores and the retailers can add more merchandise in a smaller space. Not everything is great about the grid layout though. There are some limitations. The grid layouts do not encourage unplanned purchasing. We talked about unplanned purchasing in the previous video. Unplanned purchases are the purchases you make through logic and reasoning that you had not planned on making before you entered the store. Customers do not walk down every aisle, so they are not going to be exposed to all products. If we look at the example again, we can follow the individual shopping through the store, and we get over to the consumer packaged goods aisles. And we can see that this customer has gone up and down a few aisles. They get to the end of the cereal, oatmeal, and granola bars aisle, and oh, they hit the snacks, never even getting close to the coffee and tea. They went partially down the ethnic foods aisle and then turned right around. They did make it all the way down the canned vegetables and pasta aisle. 
They thought about purchasing some crackers and soup. Oh, just kidding. Don't want to buy any of those. They go all the way down the paper towels, toilet paper, pop aisle, skip housewares altogether, and then check out. Through this little pattern, we can see that customers are not going down every single aisle. And by not going down every aisle, they are not seeing merchandise that wasn't on their list. One thing retailers can do to try to reduce the number of aisles that customers skip and encourage customers to go down more aisles is to put the name brand items in the middle of the aisle or for aisles where we have specific items that we know customers buy frequently. Let's say that cereal, oatmeal, and granola aisle, maybe we put the cereal in the middle because we know that many customers come in and buy cereal. If the retailer puts cereal in the middle of the aisle, they are forcing you to go at least halfway through. Some might turn around and go back the way they came, but some will hopefully keep going and see other merchandise that they had not seen or that they would not otherwise see. The second layout we talk about is the racetrack layout. The racetrack layout, sometimes called the loop layout, has a major aisle that loops around the store to guide the customer traffic into different departments in the store. The racetrack or loop layout can have cash registers or checkouts in each department, or they can be at the front of the store near the entrance and the exits, similar to the grid layout. Many department stores use the racetrack layout and have checkouts in each department. Let's look at a few examples. In the first example, we can see that this is probably a department store. If we go in here at the entrance, we walk all the way around looking at the different merchandise and make our way up to the checkout, we can see that we've gone in a loop. In the second example, we can see that we walk in, we go all the way to the back, turn left, turn left one more time, and then come back up here to the checkouts. We've got one giant loop here in our target layout. We can also see in our target layout that we have smaller loops as well. In the racetrack or loop layout, one of the main goals is to get customers to see merchandise in multiple departments. By having this loop layout, we're encouraging our customers to walk around the store and see different areas that they may not have otherwise chosen to walk past. Essentially, we are trying to increase the amount of merchandise that customers see, which ultimately leads to increasing that unplanned purchasing. With the racetrack layout, one of the key features is that retailers use low fixtures as a way to encourage customers to continue walking around the loop. They can see into other departments, they can see past the area that they are in right now, and they can see merchandise located in other sections of the store. Thinking back to the grid layout and thinking about the grocery store example, when you're walking down an aisle in the grocery store, can you see what's on the other aisles? Probably not. You would need to be maybe seven or eight feet tall to see across the top of those aisles. With the grid layout, we can't see across the aisles, but in the racetrack layout, we can see across many of the aisles. You will have some stores, or you will have some sections of stores that use the racetrack where you can actually not see across the aisles. If we go back to a larger version of the target example, we can see that on the left-hand side, we have jewelry, watches, and sportswear. Then over on the right, we have boys and girls clothing. This section right over here probably does not have very high fixtures, meaning that if I'm standing in the watches and jewelry section, I can probably look over and see items in the sportswear 
and maybe in the boys and girls section. I'm not able to make purchasing decisions from that far away. However, I can see where that section is located and go that way for the items that I'm looking for. The grocery section may look more similar to the grid layout, so we will not be able to see across the aisles in the grocery section. With the racetrack, we do have one main loop that goes around the entire store. This can be designed in a couple of different ways, so customers will always know where that main aisle is first. The main aisle might be wider than other aisles in the store. Retailers are giving more space where customers can go up and down this aisle where they're not going to come in contact with other shoppers quite as easily. Another component of the main aisle is that it might be a different flooring color or type. By having a different flooring color or type, this will indicate to our customers where the main loop is and customers will continue to walk around that loop that has the same type of flooring. In the smaller loops in the middle, the aisles may be a little bit narrower and all of these little smaller areas will have the same type of flooring to designate that it's a different section in the store. The third type of layout we discuss is the freeform layout. The freeform layout is also known as the boutique layout. In this type of layout, retailers arrange fixtures in an asymmetric pattern. Essentially, there's no formal layout with this freeform or boutique layout. Retailers can put the fixtures and aisles, if there are any, in an asymmetric pattern, meaning that there is no symmetry within the pattern that's been chosen. Retailers can use this layout because it creates an intimate or relaxing environment for shoppers. It facilitates shopping and browsing because it's not quite as formal or rigid as the grid or even the racetrack layout. We see this layout is quite common in specialty stores or in departments within a department store. This brings us back to another good point. I know I brought this up that retailers might use a combination of layouts in their store. For example, when we looked at the layout of Target, Target uses the racetrack layout, but has some sections of Target that will have the grid layout. The department store Macy's will also use a racetrack layout, but Macy's likely also uses the freeform layout in certain sections of their store. Many stores will use a combination of layouts that correlate with their strategy. Layouts are not a one and done type of thing. In the freeform or boutique layout, because there is no well-defined traffic pattern, there is no pattern that tells our customers where or how to go around our store. Customers aren't naturally drawn around the store in this format, personal selling becomes much more important to retailers. If customers do not have a defined traffic pattern, they may not go all the way back to the back of the store. They may not see merchandise that's on the sides of the store. Because this layout facilitates shopping in a relaxing environment, people are not getting in and out. They're looking around at different merchandise that catches their eye, but because not everything will entice the customer, the retailer needs sales associates to help the customer find specific items or to help them see different sections of the store. One of the major disadvantages of the freeform layout is that it reduces the amount of merchandise that can be displayed in the store. The fixtures are a little bit more haphazard, so there's not as much merchandise that can be shown without it looking overly cluttered. The fourth type of layout we talk about is the spine layout. The spine layout is similar to the freeform layout, but it gives a little bit of distinction in terms of moving throughout the store. The spine layout is going to have one main aisle that will take customers from the front of the store all the way to the back of the store. The spine layout will have merchandise on both sides of the main aisle. 
the merchandise on each side is most likely going to be set up in a free form or boutique style. Let's look at an example of our spine layout. We can see that the spine layout gives the freeform layout some definition by having the one main aisle that takes our customers from the front of the store all the way to the back. This layout gets customers to see more merchandise. Retailers put their cash registers in the back of the store. A customer that comes in might see an item they want in the front, but now has to walk all the way to the back to purchase their item. The only thing that they would have seen was in the front, but by making the customer walk all the way to the back to the checkout, they are now exposed to additional merchandise that they would not have otherwise previously seen. The last layout we discuss is the maze layout. With the maze layout, the store is laid out in, well, a maze. This type of layout is used when the retailer wants the customers to wander through the store in a certain pattern and see a lot of merchandise. The maze layout is not overly common with a lot of retailers, but it's used in IKEA. Most of us have probably been to an IKEA or at least know what IKEA is. When you go to IKEA, you're guided around the store with a main aisle and you're able to see different departments with specific merchandise. You can take shortcuts through the maze, if you can find them, and you know which section the shortcut takes you to. Otherwise, you're wandering through the maze, looking at all of the merchandise until you finally make it to the end where you select your merchandise and then you're able to make your purchase. To recap, retailers can use one or a combination of layouts to meet the objectives of their store.